You're listening to Be In Demand, the podcast for honest advice, inspiring stories, and ideas for growing your business by leveraging the expert that you are. I'm your host, Loria Mirabito, business mentor, and I'm also a reformed painfully shy girl, red wine lover, and exercise enthusiast. Join me as I share how being positioned as the expert in your industry, even if it's a busy one, will help you stand out and be the one in demand to hire and work with. Hello, hello, all my Be In Demand listeners. Today, we're going to be talking about the problem that service pros are making in their business. And when I say service pros, I am talking like web designers and virtual assistants, brand experts, the people who work behind the scenes, social media managers, um, you name it. I mean, there's so many professionals that are out there, accountants, Um, For example, and I'm saying accountants because I was just having a conversation with our accountant because it is the last day of tax season (laughs) and we were just having a conversation. So service professionals, these are the people who really work behind the scenes. My sister is one of those, I would call her a service professional within an organization but her one of her superpowers is she does make her manager, her boss look like a rock star. And that's what I consider like my virtual assistant who is going to be editing this. I mean, she makes me look like a rock star. She makes me sound like a rock star, but she's a behind the scenes person. Social media managers, virtual assistants, all of these different people, they are so good at what they do but they're also unknown. And yes, you can be posting all day long on social media, but how about you get in front of people? Because here's what I do know. And I've encouraged like virtual assistants that I have met, like at networking events, that they should get up there and start speaking. Why? Because there is a whole bunch of people. I mean, thousands of people who have no idea what a virtual assistant is, nor what a virtual assistant does, nor what a virtual assistant could do for them and their business. Now, my husband does understand what what a virtual assistant is, and I'm just going to pick virtual assistants um, for right now. He understands what my virtual assistant does for me. He knows, he's heard about all the different virtual assistants that I have worked with, since I started my online business and he understands it, but I had to explain to him what that was, what a virtual assistant does, what she does for me. And if you were speaking, you could be helping more people because a lot of people don't understand when is it time to start to consider hiring a virtual assistant? How do you hire a virtual assistant? You know, how do you hire a web designer? What do you need to do beforehand to get ready to hire like a brand expert? You know, for you, whatever, like whatever your business is, to be able to walk people through that in a presentation, you know, whether it's virtual, it's in a private community, such as a Facebook community, some high-end membership, could also be another great idea, get on podcasts. There are so many different options that you could be using as your mini stage. As a matter of fact, um, a good friend of mine, Sarah Wiles, her and I have been in masterminds before. I mean, she does a lot of speaking on Instagram. That is one of the ways that she built her business was crafting workshops, speaking on, on Instagram, like almost daily she did that. That was her mini stage. I don't see her doing that as much anymore, but she was doing like the, the, I think like the two minute tip or something, but she was explaining to people like, this is what a virtual assistant does. If you're looking for virtual assistants, like this is what I help people step into. And if you're looking for one, she could always refer one to you depending on your personality, but she got out there and used a mini stage. And you know that I am all about using those mini stages, but it's about you deciding what mini stage do you want to use? Do you want to speak in front of in-person audiences? 
do you want to speak on Instagram? Do you want to start your own podcast? That's going to be another series that I'm actually going to do is about starting a podcast because I get so many people who ask me, how did you start your podcast? What equipment do you use? How did you, how, how, how? And I will share all of that with you in that series. And that'll be something that is coming up. But for service professionals, you are missing out when you say no to speaking. And trust me, you, well, trust me in the fact that there is so much opportunity and so many people who just, they don't know what you do or even how you work with clients. Now, let's just take, let's just take a web designer, for example. Every, I'm sure that because I have worked with multiple web designers through the course of my career, from being a coach to a leadership expert to now my current business, you know, helping people use and learn speaking as their best form of marketing. But each person that I've worked with had a little bit of a different process that they worked clients through. But it's in knowing what that process is that would really help. So you could actually speak to an audience of people, explain to them what it is that you do, how to know when you're ready to actually hire somebody and what do you need to have in place in order to hire someone like yourself. You could actually be helping people with a lots of information. And if anything, remember, clients hire experts. And when they hear or see you speak, you're the expert that they're going to turn to. You're the expert that they're going to ask questions to. You're the expert that they're going to book a call with because they saw you speak, they see you as an expert, and you're building that know, like, and trust. You may have that this presentation. And if you learn how to craft a presentation through myself or one of my programs in Demand Signature Speech, you would learn that you're not saying, hey, hire me, hire me, hire me. You are just going to give really good information. You're going to have these little seeds that sell throughout your presentation. You're going to be sharing your authority so that the audience knows, oh, oh, she also does that. Oh, I kind of need that. Oh, I never thought about that also. That's what I help teach you to do is to really to subconsciously tap into the needs and beliefs of the people who are listening to you so that the right people, because not everybody, not everybody's going to be a perfect fit for you, but you want to call forward the right people. So if you're a service professional, virtual assistant, web designer, brand expert, accountant, you know, the list kind of keeps going on. Bookkeeping, I'm just thinking of some of the other different areas that I use in my business, graphic artists. I mean, there's so many different professionals that are out there, service pros. Get out there in front of people. Start speaking. My hunch is the reason why you have gravitated towards this particular profession is because you are a behind the scenes type person. And so you may not like being in the spotlight. So I just want to encourage you just to take little baby steps. Make Instagram your mini stage. You know, go on there for like two minutes. Give a two minute tip. Here's something that you need to know. Turn it into a reel. Super easy. Remember, you can always delete it if you really, really hate it. But trust me, people like the real stuff. That's why I am creating more videos to go with this podcast. So you might be listening to this. I might be in in your ears right now because you got your earbuds in. But there's also a certain percentage of the population that is actually listening to podcasts over on YouTube. And YouTube being one of the biggest search engines, it's Google and Google owns YouTube, you know, so it would just be a disservice to myself not to have my podcast over on YouTube. Now I've always had my guest episodes over there, but now I'm starting to really get used to just, just myself. Part of the reason why I was a little hesitant is because 
Um, my office is 10 foot ceilings, hardwood floors, lots of, you know, surfaces that sound bounces off of, but I just decided not to worry about that, not to worry about it. I'm a speaker, so I'm comfortable being in front of an audience. I'm comfortable to be in front of a camera, but it wasn't always like that. So that's why I want to encourage you. Just take a baby step. Go over to my business profile, Lori and Mirabito, and go look at some of the videos. Scroll all the way back to the very first Facebook Live that I ever did. And I am like this flat billboard that there's like almost like no personality. I am almost like talking like um, a news anchor that's just delivering news in like a very monotone voice. But I've come so far. And that was as a professional speaker, by the way. I was used to being in front of people. So speaking to a camera on my laptop, that was a new skill that I had to develop. So I am here to tell you that you can teach your nervous system new tricks. You just have to take a little baby step. As a matter of fact, I get asked all the time, like, how do you get confident? Confidence comes from experience. It comes from doing stuff over and over and over again but it also comes from other areas of your life. There are other areas of your life that I am sure that you are confident in. Maybe you're confident as a parent, confident as a friend, confident in your occupation. Figure out what that recipe, like how did you get confident? So if you had to walk somebody step-by-step step right now, like this is how I step into my confidence. You can take that recipe or that list of instructions and use it in a different area of your life. I'm very confident in the gym. I know what I'm doing when I go in there. I know how to lift weights. It doesn't bother me that there are other people around who look like they probably know more than I do. I'm confident in the gym. I don't have to question it. I can tell you how I do that. And then I can use that information in another area of my life. So the whole reason why I'm telling you this is to take baby steps. And if taking baby steps seems super scary to you, I want to encourage you to book a call with me. Let's have a conversation. I still do free coaching calls. Yes, I know that that might surprise you being somebody as booked out as I am and having my group programs and private coaching, but I still do that because I love helping people. And I'll learn a little bit more information about you and about what your goals are. Because one of the things about my coaching programs or my group programs is they're not cookie cutter. As a matter of fact, I'm running my one of my group programs, In Demand Signature Speech, right now. And if that's something that you want to get on the wait list for, it is speakandstandout.com forward slash SS, as in signature speech. And you can get on the wait list so that you'll know the very next time that I run this program again. But it's not cookie cutter. Like I've got people that are coming in, the trainings are all set, but the Q&A is all different. I don't tell people to this is how you have to open your presentation. And it has to look like this. No, not at all. All of my private clients will tell you like they're different. Each of them has a different way that they deliver their presentation because it needs to reflect their personality. Because if it reflects their personality, the audience is going to fall in love with them. It's going to have great information, but I want my clients and my students to step off the stage the in-person stage or the virtual stage and have spinoff business. I want people to say, I need you to come and speak in my community. I need you to come and speak at my meeting. I need to hire you. I need to work with you. How do I book a call with you? Those are the things that I want and strive for and that, that I am so passionate about with my clients. I am so passionate about their success. So I want you to take a baby step, especially if you're a behind the scenes type person. If you're a service professional, come on, let's get you out in front of the crowd. Stand out in a very noisy world. And that happens by being, by being the speaker, by being seen, 
by the right people, by being heard by your ideal clients. Tell your story. Your story needs to be told. Somebody needs to hear your story. So until next week, I hope that you will be in demand. And again, I'm going to make that offer that if you want to jump on a call with me, you can book that call at chatwithla.com. It, the link is also down here in the show notes and also here on YouTube. It'll be down in the show notes as well. Book a call with me and I will help you decide whether speaking is the right move for you and your business and your lifestyle. So until next time, be in demand and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for hanging out with me. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And join me over in my private Facebook group for more tips, community, and free trainings. You'll find the link in the show notes. You can also help this podcast reach more listeners by leaving a review. And as a thank you, each month I pick one of my reviewers to win a free coaching call with me. So if you haven't done so already, please leave a review and you could be the next winner.